Yo, what's up? It's Thursday and Geeks of the Week. Word to the parental unit that gave you birth. Geeks of the Week. Steph, I am uber jealous of you right now that you get to go to Image Expo. Image is putting out some extraordinary comics. And I wasn't very productive either because I was having too much fun watching you play Animal Crossing. I think it's one of those games I'd rather watch you play than play myself. Also, I want to live in Derpton. I want to be a city council member in Derpton and have people have derpy lawns and derpy houses and dress all derpy. Pyro, the ending of Van of Steel has divided people. And it's not that I'm completely opposed to what happened. It's just that I feel it could have been done better. Ludico, we're happy to have you back. And I want to be a hipster with you. Come on. We'll talk about the development, scoff at the mainstream, make obscure references. And just in case people think I'm joking, I'm not. I'm being very sincere. Please let me be a hipster with you. And Nikki, I so want to cosplay, but I seriously have zero arts and crafts skills. Zero. Growing up, my worst subject was arts and crafts. All my circles will come out like them today's. Let me demonstrate. Okay, here we go. See? It's not even correct. It's an ugly circle. I don't want to do this anymore. The greatest thing I was ever taught in school was the bowl trick. If you chase a bowl, you get perfect circles every time. The point is, that's why I've always been so impressed with cosplayers. Their creativity, their skill. It's something I don't think I could ever do myself. I'm not opposed to dressing up in public. It's just the whole, how do I make this costume happen? And since all the other geeks mentioned this, I too will get League of Legends, so it's official. We're all getting it. We're going to form a mighty group. Don't feel guilty if you have to use me as a decoy, guys. As Nikki mentioned, Robert Downey Jr. is coming back as Iron Man at least two more times, and that got me thinking there are other updates that I failed to mention because of all the summer movie madness. So I'm going to play catch up in what I'm calling Marvel Movie Revenge! Okay, so we're up with Robert Downey Jr., but minus one Tom Hiddleston. Loki won't be in the next Avengers movie. But I only think that's because Thanos is such a big villain, they really don't need Loki. But before you get too sad, it's already been confirmed. Josh Reed already said this is going to happen. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver will be in the next Avengers movie. Ugh! Uh, holy hell! Yes! I'm very excited. I'm just... I... Shit's going to get crazy. Captain America 2 Winter Soldiers is out next year. And pictures of Civil Star Line of his new costume. It's going to be this one. Only in the movies are wearing a mask. I'm not crazy about the look with the mask. I mean, without it, it's cool, but with it, uh, I don't know. I'll post a link below to the picture, and you guys let me know what you think. Finally, Guardians of the Galaxy is happening fast, as John C. Riley has been confirmed to be in it, as Hugh Laurie and Alan Rickman. I mean, this one's a bold move by Marvel. It's going to be interesting to see if they can pull it off. I'm looking forward to watching the trailer when it's out. So it's about that time again for comic reviews from me, the best comic review in the world! I'm going to start off with Superman and Batman issue 1, written by Greg Pak and art by Jay Lee. And this team up book of the world's finest starts off with Clark and Foreman Bruce that Wayne Tech employees are being killed. And then they go on other adventures, like start a bakery. They call it Man Man Donuts, because you know they combine both their last names. Okay, that part isn't true. Which is a shame. The plot was kind of loopy, nothing really interesting. I am a fan of Jay Lee's artwork, but I realize that's a personal preference. When Superman and Batman team up, no one can beat them. If they were a tag team, they'd be the Legion of Doom. They deserve better than this, and this is definitely not a good start to the series. I rate this issue 2.5 out of 5. Next, all the rest of issue 13. Written by Brown Michael Bendis and Albert Sarita Monique. And the first X-Men class is still in the future, and they tag along with Wolverine's X-Men crew to go after Mystique, who's been saving a amount of money and framing the X-Men. That's Mystique for you. Just goes to show you can't trust shapeshifters. Am I being intolerant? Okay, the novelty of the original X-Men class in the present is starting to wear thin. They need to go home. Are they too good for their home? They need to go home, go home, go home. They don't have to take this. They need to go home. The only two things I did like about this issue was one, Kitty thoughts on the word mutant. If you didn't know recently in Uncanny Avengers, Alex Summer said he finds the word mutant a derogatory term. And here Kitty gives her counter argument and it's excellent. And the second thing is the artwork. It's still fantastic. But the series needs to start hitting somewhere, it's going to drag down fast and soon. And I read this issue 3.5 out of 5. Next, Journey to Mystery, issue 653. Written by Catherine Limonine and Abba Valerio Skitty. 
and the old mother Gaia has the sniffles. So Lady Sif takes her to space to quarantine her. When Beta Ray Bill shows up, dragging along all his baggage. Typical man. Am I right, ladies? I love the interaction between Sif and Beta Ray Bill in this issue. It's sharp, it's witty, it's funny. The artwork is so fantastic, it's so pretty. I wish it was Wednesday so I could hump it. That should be the blurb for this comic. A series so good, you want to hump it. I'm still a mad at Marvel that they canceled it, and... You know what, Marvel? Let me tell you something. And I hope it all just... And I hope it all just gets stuck and jammed up in there. Anyways, I rate this issue 4.5 out of 5. And finally, the highly anticipated Lazarus issue 1. Written by Greg Rucka and not by Michael Lark. And in the future, society isn't divided by countries, but by wealth. There's a privileged few, and everyone else is considered waste. The few families that control the world feud against each other. In these families, they choose one person within to receive special training. That person becomes a family's protector, their sword. This comic follows one of them, and her name is Eve. This was such a strong and impressive first issue. Greg Rucka doesn't waste any time introducing you to this world. But it's not all talk, there's a lot of action right away. I'm so happy he has a female lead, because few writers are as good as Rucka in writing strong female characters. Michael Lark's artwork is perfect for this. These two have always been an incredible team. I strongly suggest you read the excerpt in the back with Greg Rucka. It says what inspired the series. It's a topic that's very relevant today. I'm very excited to see where the series is heading next. I hope you can pick up this issue. I know Image Comics tend to sell out very fast, but it's definitely worth to check out, and I read this issue 5 out of 5. That's it for me. Remember to subscribe to us, follow me on Twitter, like us on Facebook, because I be posting stuff there all the time. All the time. Check out the other geeks and stay geeky.